Okay, in today's video, obviously I'm going to be going over mass defect and binding energy. And in this video, I'm going to go over a quick explanation of what mass defect and binding energy are. And then we'll go over a quick example about calculating mass defect and binding energy. And I put on here Einstein's equation equals mc squared because m is the mass in kilograms and this binding energy is the joules, but usually binding energy is expressed in electron volts or mega electron volts. So this really becomes like we're going to add up masses or add up energies and then we're going to convert back and forth between energy and mass. All right, so let's just get started here. Let's see, we have this definitions for mass defect and binding energy. It's good to start with a couple definitions here. The mass defect, the mass defect comes from the fact that the mass of a nucleus, the put together protons and neutrons, the mass of the nucleus is less than the mass of the individual masses of the constituent protons and neutrons. So we're gonna add up the mass before, add up the mass after, and the difference between those two is the mass defect. This difference in the mass is known as the mass defect. The mass defect is equal to the amount of energy, because we said from Einstein's equations, we have down here, Einstein's equation equals mc squared, we can convert easily between mass and energy. So the difference in the mass is known as the mass defect, and the mass defect is equal to the energy that is released when the nucleus is put together. The amount of energy released is known as the nuclear binding energy. So this is the energy, this is the mass, and um, yeah, let's just go through an example and see what we get. So here we have, for example, in this case, we have four protons and three neutrons. We add up their individual masses. Then we get the mass before. Then we put them together in a nucleus. That means in this case, we would have beryllium seven because beryllium has four protons. This is the atomic number. This is the mass number. Four protons, all together protons and neutrons for the mass number is seven. So we have beryllium seven. And then we could experimentally determine through mass spectrometry the mass of that nucleus. We get the mass after. And as we said on the previous slide, the mass before is greater than the mass afterwards. And the difference in those two masses is the mass defect, which we can then convert into binding energy. All right, so I think we're going to do an example here, and we're going to, in this example, we're going to determine the mass defect and the average binding energy per nucleon for iron 56. Okay, so we know that iron 56, this would be the um, nucleus symbol, okay, the isotope symbol for iron 56. 56 because all together there's 56 protons and neutrons, we add those up. We know iron has 26 protons because that's its atomic number. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look up, a lot of this is kind of looking stuff up too, we're going to look up the mass of a proton. The mass of a proton in, at in atomic mass units is 1.007825 atomic mass units. Okay, the masses of protons and neutrons in smaller particles usually express as atomic mass units. Now, oftentimes we say the mass of the proton and the mass of the neutron is the same, but it's not quite the same. You see, this is 1.007, this is 1.008665. I expressed in, as I said, atomic mass units. Now, we want to know the mass of all the protons and all the neutrons before. This is the before mass. So we know we have 26 protons. So we have 26 times 1.007825 is that number. And we know that because there's 26 protons, and this is the protons and neutrons together, we subtract these two numbers and we get that there are 30 neutrons, and that's the mass of all the neutrons, all the individual neutrons together. Now you'll notice I have this, and these numbers expressed way out here to six digits after, six places after the decimal point. We gotta be very precise. Usually you'll see like six or five or something like that, maybe even more than six, but this is what I looked up and I rounded everything kind of to six, took the first six. I think that gives us a good enough answer. So now I'm gonna add those two up and that's the total. And that's the mass before. So this is the mass of 26 individual protons, 30 individual neutrons, we add them up. Now we're gonna look up again the mass of an iron 20, uh, 56 nucleus. Again, we just look this up, because this is determined experimentally. We see that the mass of that iron nucleus is 
0.934939. And you'll notice that this is the mass afterwards. This is the mass before, and this is a little less. And we subtract those two, we get that the mass defect is 0 0.528461 atomic mass units. Okay, it's that number of atomic mass units. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that atomic mass units and we want to convert that into energy. Okay, that's the mass defect. But when we convert into energy, we're going to use Einstein's equation equals mc squared. This mass has to be in kilograms. So before we can put this mass into this equation, we have to convert it into kilograms. Now we have 0 0.528461 atomic mass units. So now we're just going to convert. We know that one atomic mass unit, we just looked this up, this is a constant, is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We multiply those two numbers, we get that that number of atomic mass units is equal to 8.77 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. Now we can put that number into our Einstein equation, multiplied by the speed of light squared, and you get that that is 7.89 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. Okay, this equation needs mass in, and it gives you joules out. So now you can see we started with this mass defect, which we converted into kilograms, which then we converted into joules using Einstein's equation. And now really, when we express the binding energy, it's usually expressed as electron volts or mega electron volts. So we're just going to convert again. This is just another conversion, because you know if you look up that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that gives us 493 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. And usually we express this as mega electron volts. 10 to the 6 is a million. Mega is a million. So that is just 493 mega electron volts. That's the mass difference for that iron 56 when we put all those protons and all those neutrons together. Now usually, oftentimes, it's expressed pronucleon, which is what we wanted to do. We said here the energy per nucleon for iron 56. So we had 56 nucleons, so we're just going to divide that simply by 56, and you get 8.812 mega electron volts pro nucleon. Now, you may also be familiar with this graph. This is the graph of the average binding energy per nucleon, and this is the basically the number of nucleons. This is the nucleon number down here, the mass number. And you can see here is uranium. Here are some of the lighter elements. And iron, iron 56 is right here, and you can look that up, and you can actually see most books will quote it as 8.8 .8 or maybe 8.1, but this is the value that you would see in most textbooks or most tables when you look it up. You can see if you then this graph, obviously you just slide it over here and you get about 8.8, .8, something more than 8.5. This is probably 8.5 right here. Okay, so that's the way you do it. That is, we did all that to get the average binding energy per nucleon, starting with our atomic mass units, converting to kilograms, converting to joules, converting to electron volts, and then converting to mega electron volts. Okay, there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.